Okay, this is the second part of the tutorial series on creating an animal in Blender and this time uh, we'll be dealing with the body of the Tylosin. So yeah, let's get started. So we have our reference and we've got our head more or less done. Uh, one thing I'd like to edit now is I figure that the jaw is a bit too wide so we'll just make it a little smaller again using the fall of tool and you can see on the left side it looks better yeah, I think that's more accurate now okay so we'll do some simple extruding And already line it up during that process and go back to wireframe mode 2. Okay, so now we're getting um, near the shoulder area and this is where it becomes interesting because we want to display more of the detail and we don't just want a straight cylinder but we want to follow the the muscles and the shading so you can see there's this line going down here and this is basically the beginning of the shoulder blade and the muscles attached to it. So uh, we, we follow this line and now you can see there's quite a sharp gradient here so it looks like there might be a, some kind of collar like structure and you can also see it here in the front view that this one seems to be um, coming out a little so we can go like this because it seems to be a kind of convex point here at, at this edge check how it looks model yes that seems to be good okay so now the actual shoulder blade Now I can follow the end of this training. So move on back inwards at the end. And of course down here we have to move outward because we'll place our leg in this place. Also here, because when we look at it from the front, okay, we can more or less delete this head reference because it's not useful anymore. Or we don't delete it, we simply move it to another layer. So uh, we go to the object tab and draw layers and we move it to this layer here so now it's there and this one is alone okay mm. so you can see it's not wide enough yet so we can make it wider
and we have to subdivide here because the edges are getting too long and the face <coughs> the face is too stretched. And we can also see that here is a muscle coming in, so we can move this one a little bit inward um, because these are the muscles that move <coughs> or this is the border between the muscles that move the leg forward and backward okay so now we take this one here and move it down below and we go around the arm to the belly and now we can extrude the rest of the leg So this is more or less the place we want to get to. And now we gotta make sure it looks good from front view. And also, of course, at the inner side. So we'll move these ones a bit inside here. Mm. And also give this one more, more width. Mm. We use connected for loop. Okay, so now we add the inner points so now we have to think a bit of how um how a section of the leg would look like because we have those muscles here, and it's probably not really round. Because it's indented along the middle, because we can see this this uh, shading here. Um, so this one would be a good guess for the leg structure. Now we can also join it. We'll um, so we have to find the best place where to join. We can either join it like this or like that. Okay, so the leg will move most of the time. It will move forward, and because of that, we take uh, this face flow instead of the other one. It would also be possible. Triangulate this one so we don't get a nasty edge, long edge down here. We don't want these. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we can go on extruding the leg now. So, here we've arrived at the elbow. 
this is again the place where the structure changes so it's more likely to be thick at the back side of the elbow and rather thin at the front so we change the section accordingly now we have the lower arm and we fatten up this one here again and extrude further down So now it's getting too thin to look nice. And it's probably not accurate either. So we'll make this one a little more round and smoothen these out. So the result will be nicer. So this is too thin. And we have to go more closer to the middle in general. Okay, so this is not smooth enough, but we'll deal with it later. Uh, again, in the end, we'll we'll fix most of the most of the front look by using the fall of tool because this one is nice to work with. Okay, so here the, is this um, first toe. It's most likely, and we can extrude this one, which we'll do it later. We're already at the paw. So go back to wireframe and use the knife midpoint because we have more interesting stuff going on at the back side and less interesting stuff going on the front. So we only cut out stuff that, that's interesting at the back um, so we're saving vertices like this and still getting a nice structure you can also make use of this places like this to define the curve Better if, if we want to, it, it's not really necessary, but it adds a nice little touch. Don't overdo it by um, subdividing every corner edge because then it looks not so nice anymore. So now, of course, this is becoming not. Oh, it's becoming too uh, too thin. So we'll have to make it wider. Okay, so um, now we're at a place where we have to uh, get further references because. Uh, this is not really anything that tells us how the foot looks like, especially from the top. So we need further information. And we go to top view and we add a plane. And we unwrap it and texture it. And 
Yeah, how does it look like? Tile sign footprint. Okay. And we want the forefoot. And make it line up. So we've got those footprints that will tell us roughly where to place our toes. I think this is a reasonable size. It's hard to tell where the paw actually begins or ends on those black and white pieces but probably we have to go further back okay so now we can go go on modeling and to do that we hide all this stuff above here because it blocks our view it's not completely hidden but it's easier to see now uh, so we take one of those vertices here and now it's really mean to see on those white things and we simply extrude around the toes we see and because I know those um, those toes are mm, kind of fluffy and they're usually spread um, I give I give it some kind of frilly structure and we don't spend too many vertices on these because you will rarely see them from from the top so we can extrude along here and here and to the back and now we build the underside of our foot so uh, what we can do is to uh, create extrude these uh, to create some slight uh, 3D look for for the individual toes This one. Oh no, it was all right. And we simply have to rearrange the structure here a bit, and then it looks better. Okay, so we've got the underside. Now we'll simply, oops, um, bring those outward. Okay, we have to recalculate the normals first. Make sure it's smooth. And now we can 
move them downward again using the normal scale and you can see there yeah, it looks uh, three dimensional okay and now we do more or less the same for the top and we can uh, simply extrude all of this except for the end and we can bring it down here and make it fit and then we already have a reference we can go and move this one away because we will need it for the back and now we take these and remove them now we can do that later on ok so we move them back here and we go on extruding this area And you can already see where we're going because this is going to become the top of the, of the foot or the paw. Beginning to get there, uh, so we have to continue extruding this part. And now what we got to do is to blend it over to the old black. So we unhide it. And you can see those are really wide. So maybe we exaggerate it with a little bit so we can make it a little smaller. Not much because they are really wide, those paws. And now we take um, the fall of tool again using connected fall of and make this one a little wider here so it matches better. Yeah, like this. Okay, now we can try to figure out a way how to merge these efficiently so we can remove uh, this part because we've got it with more detail on the other on the other part and now you can already see this is perfect for merging and this one here and merge it and here and here it also fits nicely and here too and it's wrong normals merge. Okay, we can create a face here. A few triangles here, face here, triangle, 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 triangle. triangle. And finally a quad. And now we can move these intended ones up and smoothen the whole thing. And now we've got a pretty 
a nice little Tylus in 4 and it's not especially high poly so this is perfect for game purposes. Okay. Okay, you can see, you can somewhat guess that we've got a toe boundary here, seen on, on our reference image. So what we can do is we move this one apart. Uh, we move this one a little bit backwards to also take that into account to make it more believable. A tiny bit. Bring those a little bit more forward so it doesn't look all that spiky. If it should only look like like this. This is how it's supposed to look, and that looks good. Okay, so I'm more or less happy with the legs. We can do some minor adjustments later on, or we can also try some now to even out some edges. We can again use the fall of tool and maybe we'll we'll do that later on. So now we continue extruding the belly. Again, same procedure like we did with the head. We want to bring it back to a nice topology, so more or less a straight line, which will make it easier later on when we do weight painting. And also UV generation will be will work better if we have a clean shape. So again we have to think about if we want to reduce anything or if perhaps we even want to add detail. But as um, as it's not really full of detail. We don't have to add anything new. Uh, we'll rather cut one of those loops. Make this one larger so they're all on average same size. Okay, and I know that the body is um, thicker at the bottom. So we we change the section again and maybe even give it some convex structure here because this looks like the rib cage uh, bows out at its place. And this one, this might do. But we'll have to change it again later. So I noticed that we've got a weird edge, so we can triangulate the face and then it's gone. Now also here, if you already do that, you don't get any nasty unwanted results when you export it. So it's better to do that straight away. If something looks weird, triangulate it and fix it. Yeah we don't have to make it any straighter. So I'll just follow along the side and don't Worry about top view for now because we can get 
look at the refer reference um, later on. So I'm not following this this uh, little edge of skin here because it it belongs to the leg and it doesn't belong to uh, the body. So the body will go on uh, down here uh, until the base of the tail. So what we're gonna do now is um, to continue up here at the top. At uh, thigh, pelvis bone, so we don't extrude the whole thing because we're going to build um, the leg topology structure from it. So we don't need to extrude the whole thing, but we want to follow. Um, the poly flow for clean look. Uh, we'll make it a little smaller so we can fit one loop. One more loop in here, so we have one for the base of the tail on its own. Yeah. Okay, so now we have this loop here at the intersection, and that's where we want it to be. Of course this looks weird now from the top, but we'll deal with it later on. Okay, so we go back to wireframe. And oh well we can delete this one because it's crap. We don't have any use for it. So we can continue here uh, by following the Z that we have. Uh, so we want to build a flowing organic line line system here and we'll follow our rig structures and animate nicely because if you've got a nice topology it will animate much better than a weird random mess. Oh. This is not so nice. Um hmm. I don't like this kind of intersection. It doesn't look too good. Uh, well, I guess we'll keep it for the moment at least. Because this one is really long in comparison to the other ones. So we could subdivide it here. And it's better. Okay. And here. So we have to reduce these a bit. Because of course this is the leg is smaller than the portion of back that it's attached to.
Um, so now we have to be careful where the leg starts and where the tail base ends because this is not the leg, this is the tail base. Some kind of bulb or whatever. So this will be of its own structure. Yeah. Okay, and if we're already here at this place, we can do. No, no, we're not looking at the tail yet. Okay, so maybe now it's time to have a some kind of look at at the top. Um. So let's have a look at the references for a moment. We've got this one here, and you can see that there's a the rib cage is the widest part, and there's an indent in front of the legs, so we can keep that in mind. And um, there's another one here, which um, shows us that. Also, the rib cage is wide. There's an indent behind the shoulder and an indent behind, uh, be in front of the um, the legs. Yeah, and here we can also see this bulge. So yeah, we go back here and turn off our fall off again. So we'll. Just do some dragging by we exaggerate it to give it a more organic feel now, and then we reduce it later on. This gives the lines a nicer flow and better curves. And always be careful where you drag because you could move stuff that was already in the right place to uh, unwanted positions. Okay, now you can see this is the place where we've got the skin, and this is supposed to be, of course, really thin. Um, yeah, move this one a bit in here so it's not as thick anymore because this is one of the thinnest parts actually, and even this area will have to come out because it's actually indented here so this is wider than this uh, skin fold often you can you can only see those details in the model when you you see the animal moving of course with um with extinct animals this is often not really possible and you have to guess but of course for the thylacine we have uh, some good five minutes of uh, video footage and there you can see how the muscles interact and how the skin flows and all that stuff it's really important if you want to recreate something that looks looks alive you know, so pay attention to those details. Okay, now we we can remove the um, the exaggeration. So this seems to be appropriate. And we can smoothen these. Let's 
solid. So you see this this uh, intention here. This is what we want you to achieve. Okay, and now we can go on looking at the model, uh, the leg parts of it. So we'll have to work a bit on the topology here. Okay, triangulate this one. Yeah. So we'll extrude to here. So we're already starting to build up on the, the inside of the leg structure. And we'll have to subdivide here because this one goes on uh, inside, or not inside, but it goes upwards while the fold of the leg uh, goes downward. So we'll have to add some more definition here. Also here, make this one thinner. And now we'll get rid of this and bring it to the side because it's kind of annoying if you already have it in your your view is somewhat blocking. Seems to be too much apart. That looks more reasonable. Yeah. Okay, so we can. I think we have to reduce this. Um, this area a bit more because it's loaded with unneeded vertices. Um, I'm still not really happy with this flow we have here. It's not exactly the best. Not one of my favorites. Now we'll have we'll just have to see how it evolves. So now we're going to build the inside of the leg and again um, make a section. Okay. So we haven't added the back curve yet, so I'm doing it now using the fall off once again. Also here the tail base, obviously we have to get thinner. And here a bit thicker. You always have to gradually adjust these things as you go through modeling because there's often not one perfect way for something to be placed. But you have to edit it as time goes by and as you get new insights and as the general order changes. Oops. Okay, now ready for more leg stuff. So we'll just exclude this down here, make it straight. Uh, 
Uh, okay, this is where I want it to be. So this is not thick enough. And we want to have more thickness down here too. To the pouch area. And kind of building the leg along as we move further backward. Solid. Um, we calculate normals. Set smooth once again. Okay, so this has to be moved outward a little to follow the flow. So general idea is coming along, I think, um, but we'll have to have a look from close look from the side, uh, from the front. Also disable the modifier for the moment so we can see this more clearly. Oops. Uh, one thing we could do now is, well, uh, we could model um, the pouch. Um, I'm thinking about making it, um, making it animated, so um, that it would extend during pregnancy um, by using a secondary anim that we can just trigger once and then it will move along and uh, continuously grow bigger without um, distracting any of the other animations. That should probably work. I'm not entirely sure yet because I haven't tested the idea yet that we can use a, a longer secondary anim, a much longer one. Uh, so at the moment I'll just leave it um, neutral here. Interestingly, um, the males also have a pouch, but it doesn't seem to be uh, the same structure as females have. Uh, a male pouch houses the balls, so it's kind of weird. Oh, and um, if you haven't already done so, um, I strongly recommend reading um, the Thylacine Museum. It, it really is extremely interesting, and the stuff inside it, I found 
really it's it's quite a sad story and of course the science behind is also quite interesting all the anatomy and the unique characteristics the traits of the thylacin and also it has a huge collection of anecdotes and stuff and it was really interesting to read all that stuff I really read the complete thing through and it's really worth it especially of course uh, looking at all those images they've got a lot of those um, black and white photographs of course uh, from the zoos but also from um, hunters with thylacins that they shot or or snared so it's kind of sad but also some kind of document so this this part is some kind of bulb whatever and seems to be good now so I've noticed this one was way way too much too far up um, so now we can reduce these because we don't need them yet anymore just merge them here with the leg maybe we can keep this one modify again and this one draws nicely okay and then we'll just go on with the tail first of all make sure that we have a more or less round uh, section to go on with because the uh, phylicin's tail was almost round and not compressed or depressed so uh, not uh, thin or flat So just some really simple extrusions down here. Make sure that they're roughly the same interval, and we don't have to make them um, too many loops here because the the tail is quite stiff, so it won't curl up like uh, like a porcupine tail or whatever. Uh, where, of course, we would add more loops. Only, um, only, uh, um, uh, loops like this, not, of course, are not more, not more loops in one ring. Because those are useless, more or less. They'd only add unwanted but I see and fall off make it large and move it in here and remove this one and we've got our tail okay and so now we can go on building the foot. I will add one more here because this one seems to be quite distinct and this it also happens to be one of the longest loops. 
So we'll simply add one in the middle. Now it's a bit more high risk, but it's worth it. Because you can see there's this little edge uh, going out. We would have otherwise ignored. Okay. Now <coughs> on with the legs. So we'll simply um, copy front foot and make it line up because. Uh, the amount of toes is the same, of course, ex except for this one additional toe, but we'll deal with that one later. And here, so now this matches up relatively well. Uh, so we can decide whether we need these additional ones or we can decide that later. So we'll move down from the top. So now we add a knee and we'll have to look at our cross section now because it's not at all the way it's supposed to be right now. We've got too much stuff that we don't need anymore, and we'll have to get rid of it. So we get rid of this fold and make it thick. And now we have to um, turn it to wire. So we can we can see that we have this uh, ridge of shading going down here so this tells us that there is um, an indent going down and this is because uh, we have a, the bone here in the middle and in front of it there's a relatively strong muscle and at the back there's only only sinews and those are thin and this is why we have only a flap of skin there more or less so we'll get more or less the opposite of what what we had um, here at the top so now we have thick at the front and thin at the back like this so we can smooth these To adapt to this new shape, always check how it looks on solid because you might be exaggerating uh, things like those curves, like in this case, it seems to be too much. Okay, so now we can go on extruding this. And so again, we'll have to keep in mind that it should flow well. So later on, bends nicely. Of course, the middle doesn't have to bend. Okay, so we can get rid of one of those rings here now I think so we could do it like this no that doesn't work yeah we can do it like this and then we move these here and there we go back to wireframe 
now we can continue again So now we're already at the horse link. Merge these, and these as well. So now we're here again at a place where the muscles look different, or the bones in this case. So the back has to become thicker. Of course, the whole thing now has become too thin. It looks way too thin. We go back to solid and turn on our connected for loop. Make it bigger. And also, here at the back, we want the leg to be bigger, much wider, and so it looks more powerful. And we can move it out a bit, and now we can already give these some kind of input movement, so it it looks more natural if the line isn't completely straight. And the skin fold should be more or less in line. And we can see that the, the hind foot is a lot smaller, or at least a lot thinner uh, than, than the four, four foot. So we'll make it thinner and also a little shorter. And now we can move it back and we can get rid of this plane. We also move it to this layer. We don't need it anymore. Okay, and now we'll just have to connect these two again. Turn off the for loop. And we can reduce a little okay now we simply merge them all until we get the desired joined body parts and this is where we want you to get to um, okay so we can make this one a bit thicker even still Leg still not thick enough. Ex 
except for the horse link which is too thick. Okay, now we can go back to solid view. Okay, so you see here we got to turn off the fall off again. Um, we can add some more definition to the joints here, make them more prominent. See how it looks on the actual one. So this one, this is where it moves out, and this is the thinnest part of it. So we can pronounce this one. With more emphasis. Again, fall off to bring it a little bit into a nicer flow. Whoops. So it doesn't look that straight anymore and all blends nicely. And now you see we've already got a quite a nice model. So it needs just a few more details and some more edits because it it's obviously the legs are still too skinny from the front. Front legs are nice, but the real legs or the back legs aren't. So we'll now, once and for all, we'll make them thick enough, I hope. Oh, now we killed. This uh, bulb, or whatever it is, we got to disable clipping and bring it back. And so this one is facing this edge, is getting too close to the middle. So that's not where we want it to be. So we got to move it outwards manually. And now we can turn it on. This one is not quite smooth enough. Still a lot of stuff that's um, quite rough. Just going to smooth over the whole thing. And make it a little thicker. Like this. Mm. Okay, so we can move these loops a bit further down because it appears to be stretched around this area. And of course, we don't want any stretches, we want the, um, the faces to be as even as evenly distributed as possible somehow. So this is one way to get 
too nice to produce and now I've also got an idea how to fix this ugly um, ugly flowing issue here yeah now I'm looks better yeah definitely better okay some evening out some you know some edges that I'm seeing Anything I notice is fixed. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now just this little whatever it is it seems to be a toe and it seems to be located on the inside. So we gonna add it and we're gonna use a knife. Oops, I didn't want to cut it midpoint, I wanted to exact. Exactly. Oops. And now we can extrude it. Ah, damn it. No. Oh, come on. Okay, so now really I can extrude it and bring it down. Extrude it one more time. Maybe even give it some roundedness like this. Yeah, we don't have to make it as prominent as it is, which is, might look disturbing. Or it might, might be um, also a bit too strong. I haven't seen it that often. Actually, I'm not even sure if that's really the toe or if I, uh, if I simply did a mistake while creating the mask, we'll just have to look this up in some more specimens, okay this one doesn't show one Benjamin, this one has something here um, yeah it seems to be further down it's a little weird stuffed one doesn't have it oh, come on Mm. Nope. Mm. This one has one. Oh yeah, here's the reference. So the it seems to be kind of random. And yeah. Hmm. Oh, now I know it. Uh, it's. I'm pretty sure that it's this uh, structure, but from the other leg, so from the from uh, the other side. So it's not really uh, something we want to include in our model. So we'll reverse it. And then we're oh damn it. And then we're pretty much done with our model. Um, of course there's still the inside of the jaw 
and hair, you know, whiskers, teeth. Um, but I think it's better to deal with these later on um, when we've already got a rig set up and perhaps even at a texturing phase so we can so we know what we want to add and where and how it should look like how much detail it should get so yeah this is more or less it and now we have our finished model okay there's just a few more things the top is still too exaggerated so we're gonna just count it real really easily move some a few edits with the fall off and I still think the legs are too thin so now really no other side a little bit from here also a bit from here now they're really thick enough I hope we can bring out the thigh bone a bit more also this muscle here okay so now I think ah well still some more this is not quite as smooth as it should be, so we smooth a little bit, and also here we can bring it out a little. And now I'm really quite happy with the result, looks good from all sides and it looks plausible not too much guesswork included and yeah well I hope you learned something uh, from watching this and so the next step will be um, building a skeleton and weight painting the model to the skeleton so see you next time.